So we're going to call the uh, select board uh, meeting to order for Monday, February 3rd, 6 o'clock. Uh, being taped by, by FCAT to be shown soon on both live on, or not live, but both on our FCAT cable channel and on our YouTube video on demand. Uh, if you go to YouTube and search for FCAT Media, that's the name of our channel, and you will see all of our meetings plus all of Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitleaf meetings. And if you search for Conway, you will see Conway meetings. So, great. So, the minutes of last week's meeting. Did you look at last week's meeting? I did. Uh, I did too. I thought they looked great. So, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of the last meeting. Second. Yes. Uh, yes, and yes. I will say yes. So, we'll do that. Uh, and then we had we have three warrants that for this week. One a vendor warrant for forty one thousand seven sixty one, a payroll warrant for one hundred and thirteen thousand thirty nine, and a payroll deduction warrant for twenty eight thousand fifty six. So can we get a motion yes. to? I'll just note figures. Then? Figures the one week I have no questions about anything in there, and it's the, <coughs> the one week that. It would be easiest to ask all those questions if I had any. Well, if you say so. Yes, but, yes. So, so we, uh, so we, and I will yes, say yes. Yes, we'll yes, yes, second yes, it. Yes, so, yes. so we'll accept those, uh, the, the, and we'll sign those warrants. And so now, during this last week, we didn't have many meetings, but meetings attended by select board members. Um, well, yes, blissfully, the meeting scheduled for the 28th with the Union 38 negotiations was, um, was uh, postponed due to the uh, the impending agreement for a one-year contract um, with the union. Friday at 12 o'clock, we had our uh, executive session of the select board for an employee discipline issue. Um, and then at 6 o'clock was the Historical Society winter dinner uh, and meeting. And I, I only mention that just because for those of you that don't that haven't gone to that, that annual dinner is really really good. It's, they get over fifty people. Um, the food was excellent, but they did something that was really neat, and that is somebody picked up a book of uh, Robert Foss Frost poetry, and they passed it around the room, and everybody stood up and read a Robert Frost poem. <laughs> and when it started, I rolled my eyes and I thought, oh my gosh, but it actually ended up really really cool, and um, it was quite the uh, I don't know like. Peak Peak New, peak New England experience. This, a winter potluck dinner where you're passing around a Robert Frost poetry book. Thought, I just thought, I'm a Yankee now, for sure. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, um, I had no, no official Conway meetings last week. So it was, for me, it was a good week. Uh, so public comments. Yeah, we had no public comments. Okay. Is this, when, when is the time we can ask questions? Now. Now, now is the moment. Yeah. Come. Let it rip. Um, uh, my name is Hope Corlitz, 1490 Main Poland Road, and I was we wondering about the uh, Friends of Conway that was mentioned at the town meeting in the fall about planting pollinator things on the uh, Audubon property, and how do we contact that person or those people on it? So I believe Sue, Sue Wilder is the chairperson. Sue Bridge. Of Sue Bridge, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, Sue, yes, Sue, Bridge. Sue Bridge. Um, and, and, and she's in the phone book. I mean, if you have trouble, let us know. But yeah, you can call Sue Bridge. She's chair of that committee. Is she the woman who stood up that, that night? There were a couple people, but yes, yeah. She's probably the one you're thinking of. And so, so there is a plan. They have tentatively hired somebody who's going to be doing the work. Um, the work is being looked at by the Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission a week from tomorrow, if you want to come to a, a commission meeting where they're going to present their plan to the Conservation Commission. Um, because there are wetlands nearby, and so it's of issue, you know, it's of interest to the Conservation Commission. But that's a good one to get involved with because it's, it's a nonprofit that's 
not supported by the town, but uh, works doesn't work in opposition to the town. That's for sure. Um, and uh, nonprofits can do things that a municipal government can't, and it's good to have them. It's good to have them working side by side. You can do more. Um, and uh, and they're great people and fun to be with, and you would enjoy their company. So I recommend them. So they're still working on their plan. They're basically going to be killing the grass that's on about a half acre of ground now, and then some form of probably no-till plowing, um, and then planting um, a pollinator-friendly seed mix that over the next year or two should grow up into a pollinator-friendly space. But and they're funded by 12,000, I think, of CPA money that come past the town meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and they would love to have people work with them on it if, if you're interested. Uh, their, their hope is this will be the first of these projects and there will be many more of them around Conway. Uh, this is sort of like a demonstration project. And they have other ideas for, yeah, they have a bunch of other very different kind of projects they're interested in doing. Among uh, one of which is fundraising. I mean, just you know, they, they can fundraise from private companies. They get grants from private companies that can, municipal government can't. So they can self-fund projects. You can bring a project to them and then attempt to get funding for it yourself and, or assist with that. And, so there's possibilities. Okay. Sue Bridge. Sue Bridge. Yeah. Uh, old business. So our first piece of old business is to appoint the uh, Board of Cemetery Commissioners. So Peter. right now, yeah. you guys want to introduce, introduce yourself? Well, I'm Peter Fryzer. I mean, you know me. I've been in town for, uh, my family's been in town for 45 years. So I've been around. <laughs> And these are the other members, uh, Steve Jackson uh, and Jack Harrison. Um, and I'll let them speak for themselves. <laughs> yeah, well, um, Peter reached out to me, and I've been in town for 28 years, I guess. And um, so he made a good case for how we needed some help to uh, start looking after some of these cemetery issues. So that's why I'm here. I'm Steve Jackson. I've been here about a year, a month or two now. Uh, worked at Mount Auburn Cemetery in Boston, so oh, no. I kind of Great. got cemetery underneath my skin a little bit. And I'm also a GIS um, analyst, so that's my real job. So Great. I, figured <laughs> I, I, saw, may, I may want to talk with you further about that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I saw GIS, so Mavenix is on here. Um, for us, cemeteries have become more and more important as people now are approaching the board because we've been the de facto cemetery commissioners, knowing absolutely nothing about them other than <laughs> you know, we ask Peter questions. And so, so you know, like people will say, how do I buy a plot or something? And That's um, a big one. Uh, yeah. sort of, like the, 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 the fun bit, to me, the fun bit would be the historical part and the, the LIDAR projects and things like that. Um, but the, the reality is that there's people that want to get buried in those things <laughs> and they write and they have the potential to buy what, whatever to you know what um, but we have no possible we have no we yeah. don't so um that's so, going to be one of our projects i think yeah great um to tr try to figure out where the town is at with all of that um, but yeah, there's people the, right now waiting for the answer yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the uh with uh, Howland and Pine Grove, you know, since they're <coughs> private cemeteries. Yeah, they're private. Um, and, I think the, uh, they, most of, uh, a lot of the more recent burials have been going there. But yeah, I think the outstanding request um, is for North Churchyard. Yeah. Um, when you walk in there, you think oh, it looks like there's, a, there's room for a few more. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. um, but it's mm -hmm. how much? What's the policies? What? Monument. There needs to be like things about the monuments that people put up. They can't be so out of character. Whatever. It's all kinds of stuff like that. So there's <coughs> you look at it a little bit, and then you realize, wow, there's a lot more to it than just a little bit. And, um, so feel free to beg, borrow, and 
steal from other towns that have looked yeah. at these things. Don't reinvent uh, the wheel, that will drive you crazy. Um, yeah. I know Deerfield's wrestled with a lot of these same issues. Um, so I don't know. Mark Fortier was talking about a cemetery, or digging a grave, when he was talking about his grandfather and the Historical Commission's uh, recent talk. and, and uh, he said his grandfather was straightening up the sides with a shovel square and off the inside of the grave and sliced right down through the end of a, of a coffin. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and there was the body right in there. You know, that no one had any idea someone was buried there. So, it, it, you know, it's, and, he doesn't, and Mark had no idea where it was or if he wasn't saying. I don't know. Maybe it opens up the tourist cemetery. <laughs> yeah. so, so. Both, both Mark and Ernie were, uh, Ernie was a character. I think he said Ernie drug them for two dollars a grave, so I don't think you'd, you'd get somebody to do that. <laughs> okay. But our main purpose tonight was just to come in and introduce ourselves. And um, Peter, you've done an excellent job of recruiting. You've got a gold <laughs> star committee going. So excellent. Um, Who's that? Will Peter? Yeah, I'll oh, okay. stop in this week and talk with Tom. And we'll set up um, some sort of meeting schedule um, and um, get going. Thank you. They have all the bookings for place and time online now. On the website, is there the booking for when you want to book space in the town hall? Is that a week? Yes. Is that live? Yeah. Oh, oh for if you want to reserve a room, room. room. there's yeah. a calendar, look on the calendar. If the room is open, hopefully it really is open, and uh, and then call Tom and say, or, or Lisa and say you'd like to book it, and they will put it in the calendar for you. Okay. Extension zero. Yep. Um, what's the requirement for open meeting laws? Oh, I can, we can go over that. There's okay. there's, a, there's a number. Okay. Um, the, that was one of my questions, and then we'll have to stop in and, and see the town clerk. You have to get sworn in. Yeah. She'll swear at you. You can swear back at her, <laughs> and, and you will have to take a um, a state mandated what's it called the conflict uh, the, the, the conflict of interest law, swearing you won't accept money. Mm -hmm. and things like that. They don't let you get a wrong answer anymore. They mean you have to keep on pressing. A through D until you get the right answer, then it lets you move to the next question. And what do you know? Everybody passes at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, one, one note, if I may. Um, since this is the first appointment of a new uh, group, uh, we've assigned uh, a staggered terms. And um, because Peter started it, uh, we gave him the longest term, and then we got uh, Steve's name second. Stephen, Stephen, uh, and then we got Jack. Uh, Jack, your name, third. So we we do it three, two, and one. Yeah, when I was talking with uh, Jack um, last week or this week, uh, I mentioned that there might be some staggered terms. So, yeah. so these all say for a term ending six thirty twenty three. Well, we should change that. No, so, I think it was changed on the top sheet. Yeah, uh, I oh, no, it was no, changed no. on the agenda. We can just yeah. Yeah, right. the business uh, is, is right, I think. Right. Um, for Steve, it should say 22, and for <clears throat> John, I think of you as John. Are you Jack? Or are you? I'm Jack. That's fine. Or Whatever you prefer. Yeah. We, will, we will make it uh, are 21. You are you really Steven or are you Steve? That's uh, Steve. Okay. So the motion should include the so, term. So, so we have a yes. Yeah, so we have uh, we're appointing Peter for uh, a term through 2023, Stephen for a term through 2022, and Jack for a term through 2021. And can you second that? Absolutely. And we'll all say aye. Aye. And uh, and thank you very thank much. You. Yeah. It's neat to get this off the ground and. Um, so should I sign this chair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that was good. Chair. That was good. I like that. Okay. We didn't want to get it. Right. We didn't want to get it moving. Uh, and then uh, we have an extra item. Right. For you, I Open believe. space committee. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you may know, uh, I don't know if you've looked at the town's GIS um, 
It's on the. Yeah, I've looked it through the portal. Yeah. From from the home page, we've been trying to get a lot of Mass GIS data into there, mm -hmm. and we have some uh, county level data layers, and we have some very local ones too. We put on uh, some of the village center septic fields uh, right. when we were looking at uh, the question of having a, a downtown wastewater treatment mm -hmm. uh, or uh, community septic system. Right. Trying to get data about that, so that's up there. So we've been. You've been trying to actively improve this. Well, that's the first thing I talked to Peter about was if there's a cemetery GIS layer that could be. Yeah. Because the state of Rhode Island, I guess it's small enough. When I lived there, the person who taught me beekeeping actually, she'd done the state GIS layer because she just loves cemeteries. So mm -hmm. I thought that would be kind of a cool thing to have for this town as well. Absolutely. Neighboring towns have used the CPA money. And to, to a very great extent, Deerfield has used almost a million dollars of CPA or more than a million dollars of CPA money just within the past few years on cemeteries. Um, just doing everything that you would want to do from LIDAR to uh, really to, to cleaning up the, the, the tombs, to, to the, the stones, to, um, um, to creating committees and budgets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, is that through FERCON then? Is that how they... No, the CPA is a surcharge on your property taxes that's uh, approved by town meeting and it was approved by many town meetings over many years, two-thirds votes and then a ballot, but okay. it's a surcharge of the, the voters set the amount, we started at 1%, now we're at the state maximum of 3%. The promise from the state was that they would match whatever we took. Right. What, what, um, that was true for about one year. Um, and. Uh, and since the city of Boston has entered the program and uh, things like that, the, the, the pie has shrunk so that this year it's a very big deal that they're giving a 20% match or something like that. Um, but that, that pot of money then becomes, uh, with, uh, with, with categories, history, open space, uh, housing, uh, that, that the town can then vote to do projects with that money that sort of they save themselves out of their own taxes. Um, so it's kind of a forward-looking, progressive kind of a thing that not many states besides Massachusetts have anything like it. So we have a sizable amount of money in the CBA fund uh, looking for a home. So. Yeah, so we can spend like... No. <laughs> <laughs> Has to get approved at town meeting. Yes, yeah, but um, not, there haven't been that many applications right. here right. in Conway right. today. Right. So there's... I would assume a fair. Yeah. As an example, yeah. the the pollinator project was was. Yeah, it's twelve thousand dollars, and it came out of CPA funds. Yeah, it's not going to get spent all in one place, but. No. Right, but it's a process to get it even to get it. So yeah. it, it's not an overnight thing. You got to bring it before that CPA committee. Um, and uh, then, a, then the select board, then they've got to be on the town warrant, and the town meeting's meeting. got to vote for it. Yeah. It's whole. Okay. So, so open space. Right. I'll make a motion that we appoint Stephen to the open space committee for a term ending 2023. Okay. You're locked up the next couple of years. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will say I. I. Thank you. So here's. There they are. Thank you very much. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Are we all set? You are. You're you officially. are set. You got it. It's a committee. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you'll get letters in the mail, um, and, and it'll, it'll set forth the requirements about, you know, getting sworn in and all that stuff. Am I on this, this committee? No. Am I on the yeah. cemetery committee? Right. No. You are. I, I don't know. I don't remember whether there was three members. Go talk to him. Okay. No, no, no. No, no, no. So, Walter, you are up. All right. Ron, Ron. That's fine. Whoever. Um, we are not asking for anything. Not giving you anything. We're just, that sounds like a reciprocal deal, then. Yeah. We just uh, haven't spoken in a while. We want to tell you where we stand on both highway buildings. And, and you are addressing us, but you are really addressing, you know, a thousand Conway residents who are watching over the many Yeah. And, and we, have, we continue to have nice news. 
you've seen the new building? Yeah. Um, and Ron spoke to the contractor today? Yep, They're, the contractor is all done. It was got finished today. So hopefully we're going to get an inspection this week and hopefully be able to start using it. Wow. Um, really? In the spring, you, we'll be doing more tours. We got to do like a, a ribbon cutting. You got to have like a photographer there. There's got to be a flashbulb going on. Bring the off. recorder down. Like, this is amazing. Well, we still got more to do. I mean, we got <coughs> electrical to do and clean up around the building. Someone's got to make a cable. Walter's picture on it. <laughs> what about the doors? Doors are all done. They yeah, finished yeah, it. Have you been up there and seen it? It's really nice. Now since the doors are up now. It looks surprisingly uh, like the rendering at our annual town meeting. No. A year ago. There it is. It should, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. It look. It looks proper. It looked real. It looks mm -hmm. yeah. substantial. And the contractor was awesome to work with. Um, Hopefully he gets um, get the next bit, and that's what we're hoping for, because it was so easy to work with. Didn't charge us any change. Or When's the electricity going in? In the spring. Uh -huh. That's a separate deal. I mean, that's not part of the contractor. Yeah. But you're actually looking at going into the, 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 the I don't know, what what is the name for it? It's not the Store. whole barn. Storage. 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 Storage barn. Storage. 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 As soon as you get the, the That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. You, you, must, go to you, must, you must make a big deal. Morning. Seriously. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's one of the It'll be a big deal when we get the other building. Yeah. That's yeah. going out to bid next week. Uh, we got a schedule today. Uh, finally. And I think we're a little disappointed that it's no, taken no, no. this long to get our specs and design for the We were told repeatedly it would be sooner or now, next week, next week. But finally, as of last week, the specs and drawings from both engineers, Dave Freeland and Got them into the order. So, Andrea will on February 12th. Next Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it happens on Thursdays that three things happen. Wednesday. Oh, it's Wednesday. Oh, okay. She has to have it in Thursday. Oh, she get, oh. This Thursday. Yeah. Thursday this week, she's got to submit. She, she submits it. Then, on the following Wednesday, the Central Register, Com buys, Com being Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the Greenfield Recorder, and our website, the town, town of Conway. Conway. Yeah, you you got a copy of this today. So you can yeah. That. Um, all that advertising will happen, and so we're finally rolling. Did she have some idea of how many bids you might get back? Well, we got five on the other building, and Ron said eight happened. We had eight. I um, believe it was eight or 14, 2014. <laughs> Frontier sent out a bid recently for their track that they're going to be constructing, new track, and they got nine bids back. So yeah, people are looking for work out there. It's cool unless you've got to be the one picking through the bids, and they're all 120 pages, and it just reads on forever and ever yeah. and ever. Um, well, actually, for us, um, it will we'll sit there as we did for the storage building, and at 2 p.m., the envelopes get open. And so it's a, a suspenseful moment, mm -hmm. but uh, um, we don't have much to do in terms of evaluating these things, people. Although, I've asked a question, I haven't got the answer yet, about um, sub-bidders. That's what, this, 
be, this building will be different from the storage area in that there will be general contractors bidding, but before they submit their bids, they have to incorporate three sub bids that come first uh, mechanical, plumbing, and electrical. So that drags this out a bit. They're, they're getting busy on hopefully February 12th, but they can't come back uh, with numbers until they incorporate them. So how long will that take? When, when will the two Well, here are the dates. Tom, Tom has it uh, in an email, um, but um, the uh, schedule, tentative schedule is this. February 12th gets listed. On-site pre-bid meeting, February 19th. So very soon, quickly, we will know how many people are interested. Um, and the deadline for questions from the sub-bidders, February 28th. Okay, so we get the 12th, 19th, and 28th. Sub-bid addenda, that's if we have questions, we get uh, March 5th. Deadline for submission of sub-bids, March 12th. Um, and then those subbits are made available to general contractors. And Andrea, this is Andrea at the Fur the Fur Car, yeah. Andrea, who's, who's just been great. We are so lucky. Uh, she actually told us uh, earlier in the year that she wouldn't be available for this building this time because it involves subbits, and she'd never done it. But we worked on her, and and. I guess. Anyway, she's doing it, and I don't know what we'd do if she weren't doing it. Yeah. Subbids made available to general contractors March 18th. Now that's six days after the submission of the subbids. I'm going to ask her if we could squeeze that um, six days. I don't know what happens in six days. Just three numbers have to go out and go. Over. Anyway. Uh, the general contractor bid deadline for written questions March 20th. The addenda, March 25th. Deadline for submission of the general contract bridge would be March 31st. Two months. Just about two months. Yeah. Wow. It's, uh, we had hoped it would be sooner, and I guess I hoped it would take less than two months, mm -hmm. but you probably knew. <laughs> no, we didn't talk. No, it's time that was short. Uh, so, this just happened today. We'll continue to talk to Andrea. We'll ride herd on this and shorten it up as all possible. And the plan is to, uh, or in the specs, we're calling, we're giving the contractors 180 days from uh, awarding of the bid to completion of the building. No. One thing I know is that um, when you have those opportunities in that process to ask those questions of the potentials and the actual, um, uh, you've been you've been you've got this great track record so far of asking all the right questions. Near as I can tell, asking like all the right questions of all the right people. So uh, I encourage you to keep it up because that's really valuable. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Walter's been doing an awesome. Job. Hadn't he? I mean, yeah, awesome. That's why I said the grand opening. He's got to have a cake with his picture on it. <laughs> I think Ron's done more than I but we, we argue about this. But we'll settle it in a moment. All right. Two Please. There you go. <laughs> so that's all we wanted to tell you. Just great news. So next fall, you'll be, you'll be in the. Hopefully by the end, you'll be, end of You'll be in a building, a heated building with a washroom for next winter. Yeah. Yeah. By the end of this year. Well, you'll be in the storage barn in a week or so. Hopefully. Yep. Amazing. Everything goes right. Fabulous. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night, all. Thank you. So, new business. Uh, okay. Well, so we did have an item on the agenda that we're going to postpone. It's a that that we've gotten a notice from the town of Greenfield from the child 
uh, abuse network that they're holding, um, a flag raising ceremony during Child Abuse Week, which is in the middle of April. And so they've invited Conway, well, they're just letting all of the select boards and all the municipalities know that it's happening. But we have a busy schedule today, so why don't we, we'll talk about it another time. It's so. Child Abuse Awareness Week, not Child yeah, Abuse, abuse Week. Awareness. We're not celebrating right. Child no, Abuse, no, no. we're celebrating right. the awareness of Child Abuse. So. Great. So we do have a contract to sign. Uh, oops, thank you. Um, so this is, a, we're, we've, uh, we have a, a, a contract to sign for the planning board uh, for a consulting group that is going to be looking at a tower, uh, the, a, a possible location for a tower, for a cell tower here in Conway. Um, in the last week they've been doing what's called a balloon test where they raise a bunch of balloons up so they can then measure where you can see the top of that tower from within Conway. And why don't you do no more than me, Tom? You know, um, I think we've said all that's necessary to uh, help the planning board out in this matter. So the planning board is hiring a consulting group that knows technically how to drive around Conway and figure out where, uh, where, who, who will be able to hear the see, have access to the tower. With uh, they have radios and they they figure out for the frequencies that they're going to be transmitting, uh, where 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 the tower tower will be effective. So the, the, the planning board is hiring um, uh, a consulting company to do all of the work. Well, you're hiring them. Well, well we're hiring them for the planning board. So, <laughs> yeah. So, motion. can I see a motion? To so, the, the thing about that, um, the, the attorney, our attorney's comments were really right on, and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to gum up the works for the planning board because it's a short-term contract. But. Um, I, I would really never look fondly upon a contract with anybody on behalf of the town that um, forbids the town from going to court and insist on mandatory ar arbitration in the city of Boston for any disputes, and, and that if there's anything that goes wrong, um, it forbids the town from getting any kinds of damages or even restitution, and only that all the town can do is make the people redo it, um, and if you ever want a refund, they can never pay us more than 80% of what we pay, et cetera, et cetera. It was the most con consumer unfriendly mm. document. And uh, I actually uh, ran it through a plagiarism. It, it just, I, I ran, it, I ran the, the document through, and it came up, it was lifted from a consumer credit card agreement, which is just about the most consumer unfriendly type of agreement possible. And we're asked to sign this on behalf of the town. Um, and, but because it's only for 16 hours of work, you know, okay, it's what they got. But um, I would never look ha uh, fondly upon any type of that agreement for the town for anything, um, especially more than more than 16 hours worth of work. But um, but I'm not gumming up the works. I'm just thank you. Let us know that that's not a good contract for the town, and it effectively makes it so that if anything does go wrong, we really can't do anything about it because the cost to send somebody to Boston to arbitrate it would exceed the value of the contract that would be breached, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, that's all. So I'll move to accept it, the contract. <laughs> I'll second it. Then we'll all say Yeah, I'll yeah. So, but it, it uh, seems okay. Yeah. There you go. That would be an I from you, Bob. I said I. I did. Okay. You got an I from me. So. And what else do we have? Uh, so we want to uh, point to Hope uh, Crowley to the Agricultural Commission. Yes. So we met you and a week or two ago. And and. I am supposed to be requesting you to also appoint her as a board of registrar because Lorraine is withdrawing. So this wasn't on our agenda. No, it wasn't on the list. I just spoke with her the other day, so we can. Does it need to be on this week? Nope. If Lorraine withdraws, then nobody will insult me at the when, when I go to try to do anything. I, I won't know how to behave. I won't know. 
You'll have to. I'll, have to I'll, I'll, I'll stay on. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right there you go. There, <laughs> so can we do no, this next week? No, because Lorraine wants to work the erections. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect. So you'll you'll get a dose over there. Wonderful. Good, good, Yes, good. we can. Absolutely. Can you do this next week? Absolutely. Because if, if this is the first I heard of it. Yep. So do you mind coming back next week? Is that okay? Well, well we should not have to come back. But you don't have to come back. Yeah, you're, you're right. You don't have to come back. So. I won't be able to next week. But it's okay. You don't, you don't, you don't have to come back. You, you will just get the letter in the mail. And, and you will have to, you know, see Lori and swear at her. That's no, I could you. swear at her. Yeah, you could swear at her. That'll work. <laughs> nice job, though. Thanks. But so we still do have the appointment for the Agricultural Commission? Yes. And it's just like what we just did, except say hello and thank you. My pleasure. Uh, oh, I'm ours too. I'm in touch with uh, Jason, who's not on it anymore, it turns out. Yeah. So, uh, but we'll, I'll figure out who's doing Mary what. Mary Harper is still the secretary. To be Mary Harper. Yeah. So, so, Phil, do you want to make a motion that we appoint yes. Elf Crowley to that yes, yes. For so terminating 2023? So moved. Aye. Yes. Second. Yes. Okay. Second. Aye. Thank you. Uh, so we have one more of these. Okay. So now we have the, uh, we'll open the joint meeting with the finance committee. All right. You guys can bring your usual you. chair. Is that good? Tom? Question? Sure, if you'll let us. I had expected this to be in the other building, so I don't have any copies of oh, my budget. Sure. Do you have them electronically or on paper? Or do I, should I run over while we're just doing hers? I think. Let me see if it's in the attached. We got them both. Yeah, no, okay. 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 We, we, we all have a copy of it. Okay. Do I see it? I have it on the computer. I would have. Now, please. That's just the assessor. So we can go back there. You need to help me. Yeah, there's three pages because I do elections and registrations. Oh, we didn't have that on the agenda. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's as far as I can reach. Okay, so we'll, we'll call the, the joint committee with the finance committee to order. And we're going to be discussing the 2021 budget. We're going to start off with the assessors. So, Lee. Hey. Yep. I'll hand it down. Is there a page two? Is there another assessor? Oh, there's another assessor. No, that page two. That's not ours. Yes, yeah, sorry, I, I do not. This is that's, not that's, oh, that was no, a preliminary that's something that. That's mine. Okay, we do not have the election. That was and no, that's months mine. ago. Oh, oh. I think, oh, is that yours? I think because I have three oh. pages like this, so you may have mine. Oh, oh. okay. That's mine with color and arrows and. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger print than usual. We do yeah, I said let's have lead to the assessors. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll go over Great. the other budget. Okay. Okay. So, so Tom's gonna go across the street and he's gonna print out the the clerks, yeah. the remaining clerk sheets. That's great. Does that have to do with the new highway department building? They were in here earlier. Oh, no, no. The, uh, assessors and town. Well, well, if it's assessors, that's very, very preliminary, and please rip it up. Just so keep the one with colors. If it says town so board, register. That's me. Right. Yes. So this is this is current. I oh. have yes, I had the town clerk, the elections, and the registrars. So it should be three pages stapled together. Right. Well, but it's here. not. Okay. Those are mine. Yeah. Oh. So what's you, you just have the one sheet, not the rest of them. Oh. oh. So I'm going to get the rest of them. Oh. That was my mistake. Oh. Ryan just Ryan. said that anything that you have that says assessors on it. Yeah. Is if, this, if you have anything other than so this one with the blue and over here and so forth. Yeah. There you go. Yes, get rid of that. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. 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 So you should have the one that has so the, the blue current, and red, right? Blue? Yes, the, the current submission has the blue and the red on it. Okay. That's as of tonight. So it's two pages. And it's, yep, yeah, two pages stapled together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, parking, well, let's see, let's just start in. Several of our categories remain exactly where they've been, including the assessor's stipends, um, deeds and plans, dues, tuitions, we come down $100. Um, equipment repair stays where it is. The others have all changed to some degree. The biggest change is in clerical. Now this reflects the fact that for <clears throat> These couple of years, we're running an extra person in, in the person of the trainee, so that we have additional hours there, and as I phase out over the next several years, the trainee's hours will increase till eventually it's just back to one position and not one and a half as it is now. So we will be coming down in number of hours there. So on the front page, in the lower half, the first box, is the current situation. Our office clerk, Laura, currently receives $15.39 an hour. And then the extra employee is someone whom we hire to go out and help taking photographs and relisting properties. We have to go out and physically inspect every property once every six to eight years. So this is someone who can help us with that, who doesn't need to be an assessor, who can you know, simply be the second person along doing the camera while we're talking to the property owner, this type of thing. And we're going to try and go for 15 weeks at six hours a week. The trainee will come on at $15 an hour. <coughs> now, we have, we'll be hiring the trainee next month, and so we've had a savings there in the amount of what we haven't spent so far on the trainee <laughs> this year, if you can get that one. <laughs> But uh, mine is just exactly the same as it was. Uh, I, you know, we have our $250 um, for miscellaneous, which covers our mileage. Um, if we have any oddball hours that go in, anything like that, usually we spend about $50 of that. <laughs> but it uh, might be a little bit more. So what, two things we were looking at. One is that Laura, our clerk last received a raise, other than the cost of living, in July of 2013, when she went from $11 to $13 an hour. Currently, hers is the lowest rate wage for her position in the county. And she has had the job since 2005. We would like to increase her by 5% to $16.16 for fiscal 2021. So that is a, a new request uh, other than the usual. We would also like to bump the trainee up to $16.50 for next year because by that time the trainee will have had good basic assessment training, will be able to help significantly, and will be on their way to an increase every year until they supposedly reach my level when we phase, phase out. No one will reach your level. Oh, Bob, you're such a... <laughs> that's, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you. She's not that tall. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you make me feel good. <laughs> so that's, you know, something that we would not normally ask or expect, but we wanted to put it in here this year. So that pushes our... Assessor clerical, it would normally without the raise, would be 58, 358 for the year. With the raise, it would add $1,400 to it, just under $1,400 to that. If you look at the second page of notes, it tells a little bit more about those particular factors uh, rather than rereading what I've just said. Our conversion to the new valuation program it is well underway, we're in the nuts and bolts of it. I'm working with both programs together right now, checking to see that every detail from the old program has been copied over correctly to the new program, and that the values are coming back close, or if they aren't, why not, and where do we need to adjust? So it's possible and hopeful that we will be doing the billing for fiscal 2021 in August from the new program but not guaranteed until we've had a complete 
agreement amongst values that may carry on another year. The, the conversion work will be done. The adjustment work should be pretty well finished. The state's been very, very good, and the company that makes the new program has also been excellent in their professional assistance to us. Our revaluation recertification, often called the reval, begins is for fiscal 2022, so we'll be starting it this fall, <laughs> just about the time we get the other one out. Um, the fall work is mostly notifying people what's coming up, sending out initial forms. Our real work starts in the winter. We've been putting money aside each year in an article, $5,000 a year, to pay for that revaluation. So we should be in very good position there and not need any funds above the $5,000 a year. That's been good planning along the way. That will include being able to hire our consultant to do both the um, hydroelectric plant. It's required by the state that an outside consultant be brought in, or that it, it, be, it, that it be appraised separately, I should say. And in this case, we hire an outside consultant who is very professional in that type of property. The, if the new large solar array out on the Newman property on Main Poland Road is completed by then, that also will require a special appraisal. And I think we have money enough for that to cover that as well. <coughs> so any money left over from revaluation could probably just roll toward the next one. So this is all for the certification of the evaluation? Yes, of the values, yes. yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah, as part of their support for the towns that had to change valuation programs, the state paid for the difference in annual costs for a couple of years, which was very good, but that's now ended. And so our subscription this year for 2021, instead of being several hundred dollars will be 3,775. That does include all technical consult, you know, requests, anything we have, questions we have, um, technical assistance is all free, which is great. We're not having to pay an hourly fee for direct help once we're in that program. The Yep, I think I just said all that. So that's all what you have here under software support? Yes. That, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I broke down the different little categories that did go up so that you could see exactly how and why. Yeah. Postage went flying up because as part of um, the conversion, we're going to have at least one full town mailing. And that now at 55 cents a piece, or if we can pull it down to a postcard, we will, um, gets right up there and uh, mailing out the usual chapter filings and everything else is getting more expensive, of course. Does anyone know if we're expecting to have another postal increase? We just, I know, we just had one last year, but... No, we just had one the yeah. last month. Yeah, but that was only on certain items. That's true. First, right. class, That's first true. class did not change. No, no, no. Second ounce changed, I think, maybe something like that. I mean, historically, you never see postage increases um, to, consu to the consumers at large in a presidential election year. Interesting. Hmm. Tricky. <laughs> okay. Some states change their postcards there as the whole school can send them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. States do. So, those three, four little boxes explain things, I hope. Um, if you haven't, you know, we're pretty much available. Answer any questions, concerns. We in the box of fiscal year of the 019. Yep. We expended. It just, just the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. You only expended $4,800. Yeah. I didn't have the figures from the accountant. But Large envelopes are supposed to increase by 25 cents in additional ounce this year. That's the big ones? Yep. Okay. We're pretty good there. Right. We do one of those to every newcomer to town, new purchase, new house purchase. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we're pretty good, yeah. Yeah, just under our our main chart there, you'll see that we're at just about 60% of the year has passed, and we've spent 55% of our budget. But uh, so there we stand. Um, 
And the only thing that I just I, I just note that the total to, the, the total increase percentage. Yes. Um, which unfortunately is double digit percentage. It looks like about twelve percent to me. Yes. Um, and but I listen and I I look and there's nothing that I find fault with in terms of any individual increase or anything. Um, I just it's just concerned disconcerting it is just that um, the cost of government the cost just and, and your department's even noteworthy in that um, you you need to spend tax money in order for the town to make money in a bunch of and sometimes for the town to make considerable sums of money well, um, or, uh, that's, make that's money why we is try like the wrong phrase but be careful to bring in everything that's due and so I mean part, part, part of and I get it part of needing to spend more is because there's these special things that are going to result in substantial sums coming to the town um, and but also it, but, but, but it's, it's, it, it's it's just the, the, the trend of stuff well, of double digit percentage increases across all kinds of um, things is just yeah. disconcerting. Yeah, it is. And, 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 and most of that is the software yes. expenditure. You know, there won't be an increase again next year. You know? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, that should stay, I believe that's all pre budgeted to be the same figure for 2022. Mm -hmm. but that was guaranteed to us, and the state will help us negotiate for the next three year period beyond that to try and keep that down that 3775 um, and part of this expense additional expense is the you know the trainee situation which is above and beyond but it's going to I think lead to a much more um, much smoother transition when the time comes so that we don't lose ground there when the time comes, you make that sound ominous. I just got back from a week vacation with my grandkids. <laughs> I finally decided, I think, gee, maybe I'm going to retire. This was fun. <laughs> it's not fun if you do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have a question regarding yeah. the uh, clerical positions. Yes. Have you done a, uh, how do we rate with uh, hourly wage as compared to towns our size? Our, our neighbors at Buckland, Shelburne, Right, I looked at the whole county actually. wage survey, uh -huh. and there are only about 10, I think, that have a clerk position, uh -huh. and ours was the lowest, the lowest wage there. Uh -huh. As far as my wage is concerned, it's right about in the middle uh -huh. right. of all the county. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh -huh. But as usual with these types of things that we get from FERCOG, they're kind of uh, not... not not as uh, not all they're cracked up to be, but, you know that um, they didn't they, they didn't do any sort of be uh, benefit analysis as they, it was just paid. So uh, they do list they do list what benefits are included. Yeah, there's a there's an extension of the row that includes vacation and health and so on and so not, forth. Not when they were calculating what the total what the what the wage paid was though. I mean they list that, but they don't put it together for an analysis. Hmm. Um, um, so, so, so that, mm -hmm. so, so that uh, you know, it, when you like just comparing, uh, I, I know Sunderland is a sixty percent, uh, uh, sixty percent. Yes. Uh, the the town will pay sixty percent of insurance costs, and the the copay is forty percent. Conway, it's seventy five twenty five or seventy thirty. Seventy thirty. Mm -hmm. Seventy thirty. Yes. So, 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 so the pay itself is one. Yes. Just one aspect of compensation, and. Um, and it's not entirely accurate to compare. To an extent, you're missing a little bit when. Um, so, so a little bit, a little bit less from Conway equals a little bit more from Sunderland, and that's just one example. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if there is a way to, to do that, in dollars and cents yeah, because the plans and all are so different. Yeah. There's the average is average workforce expenditure on mm -hmm. health insurance and all that stuff. But yeah. It would just take more time to be more accurate, but that's okay. You guys all good? I appreciate the thank you. Very helpful. Yeah. Sure. If, if if any of you you know have any questions or think of something or please just you know give us a call and we'll come up with a revision if necessary. I think we're pretty close to it right here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank hey. you. Well, when all those things come online. When, 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 your, your, your school assessment is all yes. as well. Okay, we'll just leave this there.
Well, Lori, we have, we have two sheets. There you go. Yes. Three. three. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Which do you want to do first? Uh, you want to start with the little ones? Whatever you'd like. Okay. We'll start with the little ones. Uh, you good to go? The top. Are we set? How about it? You're okay, good. well, we can. I've never done this before, so bear with me. No, that's um, good. I'll start with the board of registers, registrars. Um, everything's pretty much the same. The salary is a little higher because we're looking at many elections that they're going to have to sit in for the early registration and the early voting for. So they're going to have a lot of increased work hours. Yeah, you have two primaries. The state and the local. We, we, well, we, we have the primary in March, we have the local in May, we have the state primary in September, and the presidential November 3rd. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be a very busy year for the registrars. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Um, and elections, the same thing. I'm keeping the salary and the office supplies pretty much the same as last year's request. Up a little in salary again for the same reasons. We have multiple elections. We're going to need extra counting people, especially for the presidential primary. Uh, what, what do we pay a counter these days? Eight fifty an hour. Everybody gets eight fifty an hour. But the, I mean, the election workers are there for 16 hours yeah. usually, and then the counters come in for the last few hours of the night. And depending, you know, and if we go rank choice, then it's going to be even more. You know, there, I don't know if anybody ever told you the long-standing uh, election night tradition of also, besides phoning in the, the, the results. We'll be emailing them. There, the there was a traditional phone call placed to the Conway Inn. Oh, yes. Um, and and uh, I just, I, just in case you know that, that I think that that now falls upon you yes, it to does be the official caller to the end, because the, it, the the tradition was election every election party goes there yes. and, and waits for the phone call. Well, maybe I'll just walk over instead. That's even better. More dramatic here. Here you go. Yes, and and it'll be the only phone call because I'll be switching to emails for notifying everyone because yeah. it's one email instead yeah. of 10 phone calls. Yeah, that's a good point. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so Roy, you guys good? Yeah. Uh, just, Laura, just one yep. question. Yeah. Is this just a typo? I mean, probably. You know, you got budget expanded, budget expanded, and it's requested budget. Is that just, if you look at the uh, FY20, um, we don't know what we've expended yet, so I know what we've been budgeted, but I don't know what I've expended yet because it's not over. How come the word budget got changed to to requested? Yeah, I'm I'm saying the first the first column of the FY should be requested. budget. The second column should be expended. Looks like it's backwards. Yeah. Budget expended. Budget. Expanded. Oh, so it's just. Oh, it, yeah. See, this is yeah. It looks okay. like it's just. It should be budget and then okay. blank so, because we don't know what we've right. expended so yet. Right, so the lower number is, well, it's lower than one thing. Okay. Consider requests right. to be expended to date. Right. Okay. That's true. So basically, Again, on, my the, first uh, time. <laughs> on the elections, uh, you're requesting... Uh, 5100 in salaries and 3000 for supplies. Yeah, um, so 8100 for the... For total, yeah. right. And Unfortunately, um, we're supposed to use the auto mark for every single election, including the local. And if the local elections, there is a fee for programming the ballot cards for the auto mark of a thousand dollars, and that's in there with that. That's a so. costly vote. <laughs> it is, and I just would rather follow the rules than. Well, you have to have it. You have to have it. Available. Yes. 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 Definitely. Anything else? So the big one? Oh yeah, the big one. Um, where do we want to start on that? 
I did ask for a small increase in my salary. It's the number one thing. Um, I kind of did what she did, except I went on the Mass Town Clerks Association and got a list of all the salaries throughout the state. And then some of the local towns that were under 2,000 people worked under 30 hours a week. And um, those salaries range from 37,000 to 42,000. So I kind of stuck myself on the lower range of them. Buckland is at 37. Um, there's a few others that are up around 39, 40. I don't remember them off the top of my head, unfortunately. So, Lori. Yes. You've got, it looks like your budget and your requested or should be expended, they're almost the same. Um, I am removing the $10,000 for the, the professional tech so that was in the FY20. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's actually about a 7 to 8 percent decrease in the budget for yeah, 21. Because even though I asked for a little bit more for myself, I took the $10,000 professional tech out. I don't, I won't need that. So the budget was 48463. But Last you've year. expanded to date 37,521. Is that what you say? Because it looks like you're going to be way over budget. For this. No, you're, you're I think these, this is um, what I did on this, unfortunately, is I, I did it wrong. I put down how much Ginny had request, requested mm -hmm. and then how much she actually received for the budget. Oh. Um, oh I, see. I didn't okay. put down the expended. I'm oh, way okay. under the, on the expended. Oh, okay. Okay. Nowhere near oh, there. Okay. <laughs> Confused. Okay. So. Yeah, that that's my so, bad. So what's the salary request going from to? It's going uh, from 33 or, 30, or 34 to 513? 34 to 513. Is the current? Yes. And the request is 37? 188. And what's, the, what, what's that percentage? 7.8. 7.8. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see. Again, the 10,000 for professional tech is coming off. Postage, I doubled. So what um, was that for? Ginny. So, was, 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 so that was Ginny as a, acting as a consultant? Acting as a consultant, I think I've used four, maybe $500 out of that. Mm -hmm. I, it's turned out that, you know, I have a few questions for her here and there, but I really haven't. Great. And I know that by fiscal year 2021, I will not need it at all. Yeah, yeah, great. So, um, the postage is more than double. Um, I have found that just mailing the annual street listing was six hundred and sixty dollars in postage, and with the, you know, and it's something that hadn't been done in a while, so the postage wasn't there. Dues and subscriptions, three hundred dollars, about the same. I added mileage and lodging because I do would like to be able to continue attending. The clerks association conferences, yeah. and that's hotel fees, mileage, yeah, um, trainings and meetings, same things. It's just the cost of attending those. Subscriptions, the same. Advertising, the same. Uh, supplies, I added a hundred dollars for incidentals, and new equipment, I left alone. So again, even though I did ask for increases on some things, I did bring it down 8%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any so I have a question. The uh, professional technical support, mm -hmm. going forward, are you expecting any, any necess necessity for expending money? Not, maybe not next year or year after? No. Maybe not. No. The only possibility I'm looking at is if ranked choice voting goes through, okay. I may need to expend the money for an electronic tabulator. Okay. Which. When would that happen, though? Be, if ranked choice voting will be on the ballot in November, mm -hmm. if it goes through, it will start with the state elections in 2022. So, um, as it stands now, the way we do it, and a lot of, there's 61 hand count towns left. And most of them have already started the process of switching over because of this. Mm -hmm. We have to do the ranked choice counting, which is very time consuming, and then the ballots themselves. And this is what really kind of bothers me. The ballots themselves need to be delivered to a central tabulation facility. So you no longer have possession of your ballots. 
So does that mean somebody drives them there? Somebody from We have got to pay or? a police officer do. Well, to drive them to wherever. It could be in Greenfield, could be Springfield, could be Worcester. Could be, we don't know yet mm -hmm. where it's going to be. And it's going to be 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning yeah. to boot. Um, if it's electronic, we can just get them the flash drive and we still retain our paper ballots. Mm -hmm. You sure you can't use a constable? We've got three of them. Yeah, they also I mean, double I as know... police officers in several instances. Um, I will check. But... I will check. I mean, they I know that less. they cost less. <laughs> I know that we usually use Randy for bringing the ballots back and forth. So we'll see. I will check though. If it if it happens, I will definitely check. So the, you know, the, this, um, I, I, I just did, um, like uh, by all accounts. No. We're lucky to we're, we're lucky to have you. Um, and, uh, to be honest, I'd love to make it full time. I really would. I would love to see it become a the, the, the office, the, a full time like, office. Like the, the 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 goofy thing about this particular budget is, um, we remain in negotiations with our union during the entire part of it, um, and they're watch they watch every week. I found this out. They watch every week. They they ask questions about the pay raises. That are being given to uh, to other employees, especially professional employees, yeah. um, that exceed the pay raises that are being um, discussed for them, and um, uh, so so like I I, I know that that, that this I, I will be asked um, a question about this because they want they want they take notes they, whatever because I so, work excuse me um, and, and 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 so. Um, but the, the, you're, you're still, you're still, even with the request, um, you're still underpaid as compared to the neighboring towns. Um, um, and you work hard, and you work for long hours for what you get. So. And overall, that number is still that's down. Good it's never been. No. It's, it's, <laughs> so the increase up to 37. Yes. So that, I mean, that will include extra hours for all the elections. Oh, yes. So it's, so it's, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it, it's between the annual street listing, the caucus, the elections, the town meeting, the hours are quite a bit. I mean, street listing. I spent the entire weekend at home holding and stuffing envelopes. Wow. Now, if I had waited and just did that in my 25 hours, it still wouldn't be in the mail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. And, you know, I, 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 I never told you this, but I've always advocated for more signs for our elections and for our town activity, the, the caucus sign, mm -hmm. the, the, the whatever. And just for, for a bit more, when you go past the grammar school, when there's a telecommunications meeting the week before town meeting, and there's this wonderful, huge sign for the telecommunications meeting. Mm -hmm. And then when that goes down, the sign for the town meeting comes up. And it's this big, <laughs> it's this big and you can't see the lettering from the road as you pass it. And it, uh, I, the same thing for the one for the caucus. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I, I, I would love to see that. Would you like me to get some bigger signs? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, uh, because that's key to key key to getting more participation Absolutely. is increasing people's notice. Yeah. Um, okay. They're not free. But. Oh, I know. No, I, mean, I, I would support you know, big old overhead ones that we stream across be honest, the telephone. Line. I replaced a lot of the election signs that Ginny had because uh, they're ancient, and falling apart. Exactly, but I got your typical lawn signs. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And with the brackets and the signs, they were under ten dollars each. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're 24 by 18. It's a decent size. Yeah. And they store quite neatly, quite neatly out of the way. So we can look into doing the same for the others. Absolutely. The overall this portion of the budget is down 10.6%. So, you know, very much. That's good. Huh? Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Good. I got some for you. Oh, I wish. Yeah, So we have one one other piece of business from Parks and Rec.
better, better a little bit, but uh, I'm the nurse, so she's... There's anything I can do today. Yeah. It's okay. Feel free to help. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Thanks. Even with Tori. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. thanks. Welcome. Have a good Thank night. you. Thank you. I'm Tanya Campbell. I'm on the Parks and Rec Committee. I'm the Conway Youth Sports Administrator. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, fair warning, I've been to one Parks and Rec meeting. So, I, and I didn't put the request in for this budget, so I don't know how much I'll be able to help, but I'll do what I can. Do that before? Yeah, pretty much. I think Harry's in like some tropical location, and um, I don't know where the other members are. And I know we are short staff, so if anyone wants to join the committee, that would be great. Yeah, okay. yeah but many committees use this as an opportunity yeah, to right. make a pitch, <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. Exactly, yeah. right. Well, they haven't gone into the spring yet. Um, so, done. in terms of the 2021 budget, I believe we just put a request in to keep it level funded. Um, I realize they're, you know, looking at the um, extended in 2019 compared to budget, it was rather low. Um, and that, unfortunately, I can't really speak to that. I know um, based on reviewing the detail of what was spent, it's pretty much the porta potties at the um, grammar school. And um, yoga instructors here for town hall. Um, my understanding, just in general, we haven't had a you know good representation on the committee, so I don't think that we've really done as much as we want to. Plus, um, with the Conway Youth Sports Program, you know some of the expenses have kind of shifted to that fund as well. Um, so probably still like working some of the kinks out there. Um, at the last meeting that we had in December. Um, someone had requested um, pro or proposed a stipend for the um, directors who are responsible for the three different sports sessions. I know in the past there was one youth sports director that kind of facilitated all three sports. I don't know if you're ever going to get that. Um, again, just in general, that person would have to have a children in each one of those sports, which you know, it does happen, but um, I'm not sure you're gonna get someone to step up to do that. So I emailed Tom, to because um, Julie was at the meeting, and that's um, who I took over for, and she had mentioned years ago that that came up, money was put in the budget, so I'm not sure if that is part of this budget, and that just has never been spent. Um, I don't know, you know, we didn't really get a chance to talk about it at the meeting, it, it did get brought up, but, um, it's something I think we're considering in order to encourage people to take on that role um, in terms of you know organizing the the field, the mowing or the um, line painting, you know, setting up depending on what season it is. But um, how do you split the responsibilities with the sports? With the sports director, yeah. so I am responsible for um, registrations sending out communication to get people to register on the Unipay site. I work with Unipay to, you know, get the um, description, the costs and stuff like that up there. Um, and work a little bit with Jan in terms of like all the money goes directly into the town bank account, but we get reports and we do rosters and I send that to the, um, to the sports director who's in charge of that um, program. So we just went through the basketball program. I order the um, um, uniforms and the year-end uh, trophies or whatever we end up giving out. Um, and they manage Corey checks, um, mm -hmm. getting coaches, people that actually coach the, the different levels, um, referees or umpires, like that kind of stuff. So they're more hands-on in the actual like program itself, and I do the higher level. Um, communication and enrollment and that kind Not of thing. Not a clear split though. I mean, you sort of <laughs> negotiated. Yeah, no, it's a little bit, and it was, you know, it's new for me this year, so it's my first time going through each one of the seasons, and every season is a little bit different in terms of what you need to do, what the time frame is. You know, soccer mm -hmm. is like a very short, like you get to school, you need to sign up that week kind of mm -hmm. time frame. So, um, so it's a little. Yeah. A little learning process there, but um, the committee members threw you in the line of fire. Yeah, yeah, and then I, I think I was asked to become the chair at the last meeting in the last five minutes of the conversation. Time. I know. So, <laughs> um, so right, yeah. right before it's time to come in. Yeah, basically, and then I get the email. Don't you want to come in to present them? Yeah. 
So. Where did that take a while? Can you? Yeah. So is there a breakdown of this anywhere or no? Or you don't have it? Um, I have. Is it more of a placeholder number based on? Well, I can. Uh, I'm things? looking at the uh, Mike Cotrello when he sent us year to date. I mean. For 2020. Well, for revised budget for this current fiscal year is 11,551. The original budget was 8,000. And to through December, it, that includes stuff that's not in the operating budget. Okay. Oh, so, okay. um, you're you spent uh, three thousand thirty-four dollars through December. Okay. Well, and again, they're not paying their their sports directors at this point. Right. No. No. There's and, no payment for any of that. Twenty-five hundred of that is for paying sports directors traditionally. What's this um, town field? There's a town field in here. Is that what? Is that, is that what's different from the? Uh, that's not in the in the budget. Something called town field item. That's right seventy seven fifty five, which is left over from the improvements to the ball field. Oh, right. town spending on that, so which is available right. for spending on ball field maintenance. Yeah, that's how you're Parks and Rec committee. Oh. Right. I mean, year to date through December, you spent thirty seven point nine three percent of your budget. So it appears you're on track. Eight thousand appears to be uh, level funding appears to be reasonable. Just on this. There's been a tremendous evolution with uh, once the town took uh, Conway Youth Sports mm -hmm. under its wing. Mm -hmm. um, Julie Petty did an amazing job with logistics, policies, and procedures, mm -hmm. and getting Conway Youth Sports um, town worthy, more or less, mm -hmm. uh, so that we have everything to reduce our liability. Um, all the quarry checks are in mm -hmm. place. All of that stuff is now running very, very smoothly. Wow. Uh, what that has meant is that Parks and Rec, as an overall program, um, hasn't had as much attention. And that's, that's part of the transition, and that's partly why there isn't a breakdown now, is because the, the balance has been so fully focused on Conway Youth Sports. Um, I, myself, uh, wouldn't mind seeing some more attention paid to trails again at some point, right. because... Conway Trails, you know, we have the GIS. We do, just spoke with Stephen Jackson, the GIS specialist, to okay. help us out with, uh, you know, we, we do have an old trails map, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not sure if it's current. And uh, so there are a lot of other things that could be done. Right now, though, we're starting off with a very solid Conway Youth Sports, and I'm really glad, Tanya, that you're... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thanks. And the, weird thing, the weird thing is there's a whole nother committee right now that's doing a trail that the town is doing the mowing for, and, um, and that's your open space committee, the South River Meadow, yeah, whatever, that, that's, that, yeah. that's the construction of a trail. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is Julie really still on the committee? No. No, no I, no, she's not. She did come to the last meeting as kind of like a transitionary... Her last job was pushing the shed through the conservation. Yes, yeah, she did that. Thank she did Thankfully, that. she yes. did that. Yes, and that's up. Yeah. Which turned into a much bigger job than she I expected. Have no, I have no further questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. This committee is only as good as the people. And it's, it says always, this is like one of these rites of parenthood in this town. <laughs> If yeah. you don't do anything else, you better step up and help out with the ball fields and everything. I mean, that, yeah. I, the number of times I was pressed in the service to do the lines for mm -hmm. the various fields at 6 in the morning and mm -hmm. whatever, it's always... <laughs> uh, we get to be our age, you know, we, we think back to standing on the field watching our kids yeah. do all that. It's yeah. very important. Actually, the worst, the, my worst memories of Conway was, uh, was my, my youth coaching experiences. <laughs> we just would get hurt. You like God, it would break your heart. Yeah. There's nothing I could do. Don't stare at the ball. Put your hands up when it comes off the rim. <laughs> Second graders, watch the ball as it arcs slowly. It hits them in the face and they get a bloody nose and they oh, sit yeah. down and cry. I had nightmares about that. <laughs> Any phone calls? You see it from across the thing. Put your hands up. <laughs> Bam. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. much. I have four Thank kids, so we get plenty of that. Thanks for patiently waiting. Yeah. Yes, yeah. no problem. Thank you for taking me. Um, Thank you. Okay. Have a great Thank you. So we have one item not anticipated. Petition that was submitted. The first four, the first four pages are signatures. The last two, 
The last three pages are the actual petition. The only thing the select board is required to do is transmit the, the planning board within 14 days after it's received. Um, we don't change it, we don't do anything to it, we just transmit it to them. It went to the town first, the town first gives it to the select board, the select board gives it to the planning board. This is so that the select board knows that it has been petitioned and is a valid item for the town meeting warrant. So there is a loop. But right now, your only responsibility is to transmit it to the planning board. Has our town and the solicitor looked at this? Yes. Mike, before we leave, can I ask you a it question? It doesn't, and it doesn't matter. We have to print it the way it is received. That's the. Uh, so one question, quick, and then. What's the upshot from uh, last week's meeting that, that was uh, you guys moved down to Sunday? Talking with the other towns. Uh, John and I went, and we met, you know, and and Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay were there, and. We could. Most of the, oh, okay. most of the things. I thought it was more. It was more. It was. It, it, it was we about talked about things uh, of a financial nature, but it was more people expressing needs to them. Talking about open space. I mean, talking about affordable housing and okay. sewers and sort of. Yeah, suddenly it wasn't that specific. Is it not many no. issues? It was more of a usual whistling. No. It was, but it wasn't much issues of importance to Conway. You know, all of our road lighting we have here. <laughs> well, the street lights? Street lights, yeah. We have the right intersections. So, okay. I'll be, uh, I'll be sure. so I don't see that there's anything controversial about this. We're just passing this along. I don't know. Right. So, so from my understanding of the statute, there's a there's a few things on it that um, seem to be legally dubious. But, yes, uh, there are. Well, but that's not our responsibility. It's not our responsibility. Yeah, you know, okay. And we have to print it as received. So you know, you can have that discussion with the people who wrote the petition, but it's not. No, no. Um, so the vote is to transmit it to the planning board. So I'm going to make a motion that we transmit this to the planning board, as we're required to do. Uh, okay, then. Is that a second? Yeah. I'd vote aye. Yeah. Uh, I Thank you. I don't see it as... You know, you know I mean, uh, John's not here today, but I think that he would... He would love it. He would be fine. I mean, he, has, he would love it. It's the closest thing to a moratorium we've seen in a we while. We have no choice to... Well, whatever, it doesn't matter what it's about, right? We have to do it. So. You'll, you'll have your chance. I, I mean, we have to pass it on later. Of so, so there will be hearings and all of that. So. Okay. That's it. So we, we voted that. That's that. Uh, town administrator update. Oh, yeah. Quick one. Uh, most of my time was spent on this marijuana petition, <laughs> actually. Um, uh, as you know, the Open Space Committee is preparing to update its seven-year open space and recreation plan. They're also working with the Community Preservation Committee to see whether some of those funds could be used to help with the cost, supplementing what we may get from the Fur Cogs DLTA program. In departments, the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District has received a revised recycling contract and has reviewed it by now to ensure the changes towns had suggested or incorporated. Um, and I have a final recycling contract ready for you to sign next week, but not in time to get on the agenda. Uh, the visitor has formally announced that it is ceasing publication. Oh. As you know, I had been in touch with the Council on Aging regarding uh, the possibility of the town picking up at least some of its functions. Uh, I'll be meeting with Pat Lynch to discuss what our options may be. Uh, this would be a good time to bring that back, the possibility of additional funding to take care of that. The visitor estimates the material costs are $3,500. I anticipate about 16 hours of work per month to put such a newsletter out. Looks at $20 an hour would be another $38.40 per year in labor costs for a total of $73.40 for a newsletter line item. I'm working with the animal control officer regarding further complaints about the situation on Graves Road. We'll be meeting tomorrow to discuss possible responses, so you may hear about that next week as well. The regional DLTA priori priorities have been compiled by the FERCOG. The top three vote getters were culvert assessment, pollinator habitat planning, and updating open space and recreation plans. <laughs> So our committee will be happy about that. In fact, I've written Janet to inform her that Great. that will be a regional priority. 
apparently so, a lot of people are on the same cycle we are. So just, just regarding the uh, visitor, there is um, uh, uh, a citizen group that is um, currently planning to take it over. Oh, okay. And um, that would be for, um, two of the people that, that I've met with um, are Veronica, <coughs> Veronique um, Blanc, what's her last name? Blanc Blanchard. Blanchard. Uh, and uh, Louise Beckett. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, yeah. Louise, is, Louise especially is interested in being the editor because she has just retired from Amherst um, mm -hmm. College and where she was an editor of the faculty newsletter, and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, they, they met with the visitor people um, and uh, they're interested. Well, the, so the, di the, great. the difference between what the, the difference between what the visitor brought in and what the visitor cost was about a thousand dollars every year mm -hmm. and so they're potentially interested in just that without asking the town or something for that thousand dollar difference just for the first year and then hoping to rip to, to not have that be a recurring cost yeah. um, okay uh, and so doing it under the auspices doing it with town funding would also involved doing it under the auspices of the town, but that needn't be burdensome. Yeah, and it would be easy, especially since both individuals live walking distance from the town office. So, um, so that uh, is great news. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and uh, because they're you know they're skilled at this sort of thing too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is, so is the, the the visitor put out a February newsletter? Is that the last one then? Yes. It you can you'll see that it announces its own demise. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so, but there's, there's, um, there isn't, there isn't quite permission yet to even carry on the name. And um, mm. there's also uh, discussions about whether it would, uh, uh, have any other items on it. Like the, the one thing that they want to do is do more about people in town. They want to have them focus on sort of uh, what what a, every month a different graduate of Conway Grammar School is up to or something like that. You know, um, just 20 years down the road kind of a thing, story that just a, whatever. Local, local yeah. human interest. Local human interest stuff they want to do more of. Uh, um, but, Great. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're all they're all talking about that. Mail. Good. So we have one piece of mail. We got a note from Furcog, uh, which was a, uh, a a note from Eric Lesser or to Eric Lesser, um, and uh, he's oh. I you know, actually just meant, this? meant to add that to my update. Uh, the, the, the COG is recommending that uh, the legislature establish the Office of Rural Policy as the Rural Policy po um, Committee you know, um, plan included. And I have, I meant to add, I... Um, so the FERCOG has worked real hard on this yeah. rural I, policy I've, I've, I've drafted commission. a letter to support that as well. Great. Um, to be a voice in Boston to work, you know, for rural interests. Pointless additional bureaucracy. A lot of uh, states have them. Office of Rural Policy. Are there any announcements? Um, wait, there was something, but I forget. Oh, maybe it was the visitor thing. Great. Yeah. Uh, so next meeting, February 10th. Six o'clock here, right here. Okay. Finance I six thirty. Make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Aye. Thank you.